Thanks for joining me for this video. I just wanted to talk a little bit about winter, which is a question we've been receiving a lot through email on our blog and on Facebook. And it's understandable, it's a bit of a concern. And so we thought we'd share a little bit about what our experience this far has been. Of course, this is not going to be the end all be all video on winter, but we can kind of tell you a little bit about what's happened to us, what we learned from it, and maybe you can benefit from it. So let's dive right in. So the first thing we thought we would touch on is construction. And the Northwest has had a couple of mild winters uh, for the last two years. And so we thought maybe we might get lucky, sort of, and get another mild winter. Of course, we don't want a mild winter, but we weren't sure if we would have one or not. So we went ahead and kind of jumped into construction and then we kind of got stonewalled. So we're happy that we have a full on winter, but we didn't get very far with construction, but we didn't have very much time either. So behind me, we dug the footing beds for the barn and here they sit. They're full of snow. We're not gonna be able to work on them until we get some uh, thaw and maybe even into the spring. So that didn't go well. Just up the hill there is our hot tub deck. We had a lot of steam going on that and then we kind of got derailed with getting the cabin built and preparing for winter because it became obvious we weren't gonna get anywhere on our barn. Uh, so we ended up shifting focus from that to getting a cabin and everything ready for uh, winter, which we did, and it's working just fine. We'll talk about that a little bit more in detail later in the video. So if you're gonna work on some construction projects and you're kinda late starting on your homestead, hedge your bets against winter. If you think you'll have a mild winter, maybe get started on construction. If you're not quite sure, then maybe uh, hold those projects until spring. So that's just our experience. We weren't sure, but here we are. We're actually having a more than normal winter uh, for our area, which we're excited. We're loving having all the snow and the colder temperatures. It's kind of forced us to take a break, so we're working on other things. Something else we learned from the very first snowfall, which kind of happened like as we were putting the wood stove in the cabin, is that we needed to get all of our materials protected. So after the first snowfall melted, we got out here and we got everything covered. And that's really helpful because we've actually needed a little bit of materials kind of through the winter for this project and that. And so we can come out here and grab it. So if you have a moment before winter hits wherever you are, try to get everything covered. Quick tip, we found free tarps, massive free tarps at the building supply store. They have tons of them. They come off of the lumber, whatever they're called, the, the lumber, they come off the lumber. I don't remember what they're called, who cares? <laughs> units, they come off of the lumber units. That's the proper term. Anyway, so we found those for free. We just asked nicely. We were able to get some long ones, short ones, tall ones, skinny ones, and we actually got enough to cover our four wheeler, our lumber, and our wood pile. So just ask, you can get free tarps. Don't spend 20 bucks on a tarp. The only reason we can even shoot this video at the moment is because somewhere around two feet of snow has melted off in the last couple of weeks where the temperature has warmed up to maybe around 40 degrees or so. Prior to that, this four wheeler right here was actually covered in about two feet of snow. So if you can, try to get enough tarps to cover anything you're going to need during the winter. Uh, protect it from the rain if you're gonna get rain, but if you're in the snow country and you think you might need that during the winter, get a tarp on it. We've actually needed to pull this out a couple of times, the four wheeler, and do some things with it. It's much easier to find when you can just pull the tarp off of it. We did not get our trailer tarped. We don't have enough tarps yet, so that one's got some snow in it. So if we needed to use it, it's gonna be a booger. So if you can, try to get things like your four-wheeler if you have one tractor, you know, like that tarp. Unless you're one of the fortunate souls, unlike us, who shows up with all kinds of barns and all this other stuff to protect all your valuables, but highly unlikely. If you're just starting out, you're probably going to be very exposed which means getting the level of protection you can afford. So that's kind of a quick tip. Uh, the next thing that we learned because we haven't lived in snow country for quite a while is that if you have any parked vehicles, you need to keep them clear of snow. Again, you snow experts out there are already going to know that. Well, guess what? Not everybody watching this video is a snow expert. So if you have a vehicle, for example, our pickup truck, we're not using it very often. We've been keeping it clear. So if we get six inches of snow, we come out with a broom and we simply pull the snow off. That helps us if we need to move it, which we needed to do recently to plow the driveway. If you don't do that, you're going to have a mess on your hands. So if you can, try to get out and uh, clear any unused uh, vehicles of snow when it snows. Make your life a whole lot easier. Another thing that we learned was that we didn't need as much firewood yet as we thought we would need. 
As some of you might know, where I'm standing now, there was firewood. We did, we didn't know was we were actually pretty comfortable down to a fairly low temperature. Early on, we were burning the wood stove even as high as like 35 degrees. Turns out we didn't need to be doing that because the only reason we have the wood stove is to help us to keep from freezing up. It's not really to keep us warm. We have our trailer for that. So this is a bit of information for you. Our cabin and everything is fine down to the low 20s, even overnight, but without freezing up. Part of the way we make that work is that we keep the cupboards open in our RV so that the warmth can get into the plumbing and things to keep things from freezing up. The point is, we probably could have burned three times less wood had we known that small fact. See, it's easy to think if it's below freezing, you're going to freeze, but that's not completely true. It's kind of like the idea of a greenhouse or kind of like covering your tomatoes so they don't get frost. It's amazing when you just cover something, how much warmth will stay inside. And that's our experience too. So the cabin and the tent and everything helps us to stay warm. So if you're thinking about getting wood, you might need between five and six cord of wood if you have a really extreme winter. Uh, in our case, we had three to four cord and we stopped burning about two weeks ago. Only the reason we burn is to remove moisture from the cabin because of our propane heat and showers and all that stuff. So hopefully those give you a couple of tips if you're thinking about homesteading in a winter climate. That's what's working for us. Kind of give you an idea on how much wood to burn and when and how much wood you might need. All right, next tip. One thing that we did kind of predict well was that we might need to plow the property. So we sorted the property out so that we had a place to put the snow and we still had room to move about. So for example, all of our reclaimed materials, we kind of stored on the edge of the property because we don't think we're gonna need them all winter long. So just keep them out of the way. Um, as far as where we put our cabin and RV, that's kind of centrally located. We also made sure that over on the end of the property there, we have a place to push the snow. So if you think you might have snow, make sure you have a place to put it come winter time. One quick tip that we found uh, for running our generator at really low temperatures, which we found it doesn't really like to do. Yes, we know there's water in the gas, blah, 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 blah. We got it. Okay. So we put heat in the fuel. That helps to take care of any water in the gas problem. It also keeps the carburetor from icing up. Uh, that's actually something that happens a lot with carbureted engines at low temperatures. So if you can, if you're having generator running problems, put a, a gas dryer in there. An example of that is heat. So another thing that we found is just to keep the generator warm. That helps. So we've been uh, when we run it, we put it in the back of our pickup truck here and we close the truck up, except we prop the canopy open so that the generator can breathe. And it actually warms the bed of the truck up quite a bit, enough that the generator runs perfectly fine when we're out here uh, working. So quick tip for you, if your generator's not running good on really cold days, maybe just put it in something, for example, outside that you can ventilate and uh, let it warm that area up. It'll probably run a lot better. Also a tip, do try to use good fuel and add some sort of a fuel additive to dry the fuel. Even if you don't think there's water in there, there may be. And even if there isn't, the carburetor probably will still make ice anyway, just because of how carburetors work. So that's something that can save a little bit of your headaches. When we first arrived on our property, we were in town several times a day because we had a lot of errands to run and a lot of things to get done. But what we have been able to achieve is we can go between four and seven days without needing any supplies. Is that gonna sound great to the prepper crowd? No, but we don't really care. We're trying to show people how to get started off the grid and that's what this video is about. So we've been able to achieve four to seven days with supplies. That's pretty good because if we get a strong storm or something like that that comes in and we can't leave the property, we're actually okay for quite a while. We keep backup propane so we can actually go over a month without any propane, which is pretty good. Uh, the things that we need to get are water and fuel for our generator. We could probably increase the quantity of those that we keep on hand but we don't need to. So we only keep about six gallons of fuel for our, our generator, which will last us between four and seven days. And the same with water. We have 48 gallons of water on hand will last us between four and seven days. So that's a pretty good benchmark. If you can go into town once a week, that's pretty good. That's a great place to start. Ideally, you'd love to go three to six months without having to go into town, but that's maybe not ideal for getting started. So maybe aim for that as a benchmark um, for your getting started off-grid homestead. So that wraps up our first off-grid living winter tips video. Uh, 
bring this outro to you from the only remaining snow on our property. That's the irony of waiting for just a little time to wrap up a video. It's been about a week and all the snow is gone. So anyway, hopefully those tips will help you. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll put a subscribe button right here. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And also please follow us on our blog. It's purelivingforlife.com. We'll put a link in the description below. We also have a Facebook and an Instagram. We do a lot of micro posts over there. So if you enjoy those, please follow us over there and we'll see you next time.